Dear listeners, welcome to the second installment of our EduCast. If in the first episode we had in our guests the PYP coordinator, in this episode we'll be focusing more on the latter part of your education, which is the end of your high school and also applying for universities. So, in this installment we have three guests. Firstly, a current IB DP student, Esther Puola, who is successfully accepted into NYU Abu Dhabi, as well as she has participated in many state Olympiads and gotten very good scores, and also is waiting to receive a prize from the Prime Minister for her academic excellence. Secondly, we have Kata Fredheim, who is uh, the VP of strategy as well as associate professor in economics and business at SSC Riga. And lastly, we have the IBDP coordinator for ISR, Miss Emily Buckland and uh, me. So uh, before we start, many times in the introduction I mentioned the IB program. So Emily, first question goes out to you. Could you please further expand for our dear listeners, what is the IB program as a whole? First thing you need to know is that the IB has a lot of acronyms. So the IBDP stands for the IB Diploma Programme, the International Baccalaureate Diploma Programme, more to be precise. It is essentially the final two years of high school. Um, the purpose is to be an academically rigorous, challenging programme. Um, it's all about having both breadth and depth. And the whole sort of purpose is just to kind of really culminate the skills that students have learned lower down the school through the PYP, through the NYP, um, but really challenge themselves academically. They have a little bit of choice over the subjects they choose. Um, but as it is a diploma, it has set requirements that must be met. Do you want me to go into detail about the subjects that students can do? A little bit, yes. Okay. So the kind of what we call, I call, from my previous school, it was named as the umbrella. The IB umbrella is the core. Um, it kind of encompasses all of it. We have the theory of knowledge, which is a, a course which is all to do with challenging the thinking skills of students. So it's all about how and why they know what they know to challenge the sources, to, to be critical with their thinking. Um, and it's, it's considered the umbrella because it looks at how this would be applied all the way across the IB diploma subjects. So it brings in a bit of the arts, a bit of the sciences, a bit of humanities. Um, that is assessed through an essay and an exhibition. Um, alongside that in the course, students have to do an extended essay. This is a super challenging part, and I'm sure Esther will enjoy talking about this later. It's a 4,000 word essay. I feel like that prepares students a lot for further education, though. It's almost like doing a mini dissertation. And I never had an opportunity to do that when I was at school. So it's a, it's a big learning experience, but one that students are very proud of when they finish. Um, and they also have to do the CAS, which is Creativity, Activity and Service, which is essentially a, a focused extracurricular program involving the creativity aspects, activity service, whilst focusing on these seven particular learning outcomes. And then alongside that, they have their, their main subjects, which go from six groups. They have language and literature, which at ISR we do English. Um, we have the second group is foreign language, language acquisition. We offer French and Spanish for students who have prior experience or a beginner's German course. The beauty of the IB Diploma is it does also give students the opportunity to um, continue with a native language. So we offer taught Latvian literature, which you can do instead of a foreign language, or you can do what's called the school-supported self-taught language if you have an additional native language. Like we have students who have Hebrew, Ukrainian, Russian, Estonian backgrounds, Vietnamese, and they work with a tutor to do the literature course. Um, the third group is the humanities, which we do economics, geography, and history. Um, the fourth group is the sciences. We have four sciences on offer, biology, chemistry, physics, and computer science. The fifth group is mathematics, and then the final group is the arts, which we offer 
visual arts and film. The arts group is the only optional group and a lot of students instead of doing the arts may choose to do a second humanities or a second science. So as you can see there's a lot going on with the IB diploma, that's why I said it is quite academically rigorous. It's a busy two years for students um, but hopefully they do develop a lot of skills through doing it. No, I could add upon that because uh, some of our uh, my peers who are, whom I'm studying with, for example, just now we had to submit our uh, macroeconomics reports and the people that previously had studied in the IB program, they, uh, well, let's say they really outperformed a lot of us. Like, for example, a friend of mine, uh, the, max, the upper limit was 25 pages for the report. He submitted that more 25 uh, pages with references. I mean, it is quite astonishing. Uh, and he said, and I asked him like, how can you do all this? Like, it's, it's crazy stuff. Like you had to only submit 16 pages. Why would you do 25? And he told me, oh, it's nothing. I just like, this was something that I wanted to write and I find it somewhat enjoyable. And actually it isn't that hard compared to <laughs> what we had to do in the high school. So yeah. There's some little, there's some truth to it. And now moving to the student's side. So moving on to you, Esther, uh, you just had your exams, as I know. How did those go? <laughs> um, very stressful, but I felt really prepared for them. There's a lot of content that's covered throughout the two years, and it can be super, super overwhelming. But with a good support system, I think my whole class was able to get through it really well. Okay, and uh, how would you say, how has been the experience, for example, for applying to universities? Because I know some Latvian students experience some difficulties uh, due to their, well, the normal program that we have, the status quo. How has it been with the uh, IB? Is it, uh, well, of course it's more accepted, but how has it been? Um, I think a lot of universities know a lot of, about IB and they know, like Ms. Buckland said, it's super academically rigorous. So... I got a lot of positive feedback when applying to my university. Um, yeah, I think it makes the whole process a lot easier because it is an international course. So it's, yeah, it's more understood. And how would you say, for example, the previously mentioned uh, theory of knowledge has helped along the way? Like, have you, how have you applied it all throughout? Um, Throughout my studies and throughout my university acceptances, it's been everywhere. When you start to notice those little things, it's what pushes you to the upper band in like the grades. Uh, if you know how to apply that learning, it can help you in pretty much anywhere you are in your life. Okay, nice. Now, moving on to the second segment. So... You talked about applying, for example, to university. And now let's gain some kind of a different perspective from the university side. So here, got them. So uh, we are now talking specifically about the uh, Stockholm School of Economics in Riga and what is the apl application process there. So it is uh, a university right here in Riga, which is being taught in English. We have a big international community and uh, our main goal is to aid uh, well Baltic's competencies and uh, well to our development. So uh, could you provide some sort of an overview of the university admission, admissions process at the SSC Riga? Thank you that's a great question and thanks for having me here today it's it's great meeting all of you. So we are actually in the middle of the admissions process. Um, so I have a lot of live comments as well. Uh, the Stockholm School of Economics in Riga was established 30 years ago now by the Stockholm School of Economics. So this is our 30th anniversary. Loads of big parties happening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but what we, what we have seen is that we successfully contributed to the development of the region and we continue doing so and we are always excited to have new students. Our admissions process is different from that of other Latvian universities. Um, our deadlines are much sooner. So our deadlines are typically in April already, whereas for most Latvian universities, I think it's June. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even July, I think. Even July. Yeah. Even July. Good way to spend the summer. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
but so we 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 have a very competitive admission cycle we advertise internationally not just in the baltics but also abroad um we get uh very good applications also from IB schools. This year we got from Sweden, from Austria, from Lebanon, from Germany, of course from Latvia, mm -hmm. great school. Um, and so what we have is you apply by the deadline, you write a motivation letter, you input uh, all your grades, upload your transcripts. It really doesn't take that long if you know what you want. <laughs> if you don't know what you don't want though, and I see you smiling, it can take a long time. Then uh, we go through an initial selection process and for those who qualify, uh, they have to attend a test. We test three things, mathematics, logical aptitude, uh, so how, how well can you think and solve problems? You remember that? I remember that. I did like, I was quite surprised by just like how well I did. <laughs> <laughs> and what was it like? Oh, it was uh, very stressful those three hours. I remember I started off I think it was uh, English, and with the English part, I remember I uh, had those uh, check mark questions. I was like, "Oh, easy! It's like A on or in, like something like that." I was like, "Okay," I did that part, and I was like, "Boom!" An essay. But luckily, I was very well thought uh, thought in my uh, high school. I just used the structure, wrote an essay. I remember in the logical amplitude, it was like 150 questions. And I thought, "Oh my God, I'm a little bit overwhelmed," but uh, it all went by so fast and I remember I thought I answered everything but yeah the mathematical questions is also like it more tests your speed and the speed of your thinking rather than uh, for example how well you know it because when I was preparing I saw that there are some kind of like correlations like you have to understand the math behind it like you can see those things for example in logarithms or uh, yeah you just have to see it and there's like patterns and it is more about that, but it was quite stressful. But I really liked, for example, the interview process. That was nice. That's because you got to the interview stage. Yeah. So when, when, when we, you do the test, then we again do a selection round. So English, mathematics, and logic, logical aptitude. And then um, we filter out the candidates who, who do not meet our criteria and then we interview people and this is actually the time we are doing the interviews at the moment mm -hmm. i we meet every candidate two professors for half an hour and we have a conversation they have to do a case study yeah. so they read a case uh, prior to the interview it takes about 90 minutes uh, it's about 12 to 20 pages and they have to think about a business problem and think about what they need to do with that problem and then we spend the rest of the time learning about the candidate and why they're interested in economics, what they know about economics, what makes them tick, how are they special. How important is academic performance uh, compared to other factors such as extracurriculars that you are involved, for example, sports, arts, music. So how does that all tie into the applications? And so we are looking for people who are not just academically able to perform well, but people who are obviously interested in economics and business, but have, you know, poor people. So the, the grades get you into the test, then your knowledge gets you through the test. And then in the interview part, we ask you about, so do you have job experience? What did you do in your free time? Uh, what hobbies did you have? And it's also, it's about seeing you as a person, but it's also about uh, assessing how well you, can you manage your time? Uh, what are your social abilities? So it's not just about, you know, dancing. Dan if you're a professional dancer at the age of 18, it tells us so much about you because to do those dance practices every day, how did you manage to get, you know, top scores in your school and do the dance practice? We want to know about your thinking, your, your schedules, every detail. So we look for everything. If if you have top scores and you've not done anything in high school, no extracurricular, you still might get in. But we're looking for balanced people and great individuals who can contribute to the community because the community is very important for us. So the moment you enter SSC Riga, you become part of this very close-knit community. We only take about 140 students a year. 
uh, you will get to know your classmates within the first month. After two months, you know your second years, and soon you will know your third years as well. And then you get to know the alumni community, which is your best network. So um, we also expect you to contribute to the community, and past community contribution is, in a way, a signal towards that. And this is what I've also seen, for example, for applying to universities as a whole. Like, I was very surprised when I applied. I thought there was, like, there's going to be some sort of, like, one type of people there but no it is like such a wide spectrum like we have programmers we have uh, people that are in uh, like sports very heavily involved like national uh, teams and stuff and also people who are really good with numbers of course well that i expected but there's such a big plethora like people who have like their own games they've already made which i found very interesting so people in arts uh, and uh, there's like not one right recipe you just have to be your own, be, yeah, be yourself. And this is what I've also seen like with other universities. I've talked with, uh, talked with a lot of people and they said, yeah, like one of the most important things is that you be yourself, for example, in the interviewing process. I remember when I was trying to apply, everybody just said like, don't ask any questions like how to be a better self, just be yourself and they will see it because if you're not doing that, they'll just see right through you. And- um, Can I bring something in on that? Yeah. That, that's one of the things, when I first moved to an international school, um, which was in Hong Kong, which was an IB school, and I was kind of almost immediately quite surprised by, by the students. Um, coming from the UK originally, which was more of an A-level background, there is no requirements to do anything other than the three or four subjects that you're studying, and that is it. Whereas then going to an IB school, I was really surprised by how confident how articulate the students were. And I was like, is that is this just this school or is that in general? And then I got to see other IB schools in Hong Kong. I was fortunate to travel and visit some schools in Singapore and some schools in Dubai, all of which were IB schools. And they were all very similar in that way. And it kind of, it really surprised me. And I was, and I had to actually make that distinction to the students themselves because they've grown up in that environment. I don't think they realize how, going through an IB education actually does set them aside from a lot of other people around the world. The IB has this, this thing called the learner profile, which are these essentially 10 skills which we try to develop and encourage within them, which involves being good communicators, being principled learners, there's a whole load of them. And that if that is embedded right in the way students learn, as well as the approaches to sort of inquiry, so we don't just stand at the front and teach students this, this and this. We essentially try and teach them how to learn, skills in how to learn. So they come out of the program um, with these really good skills in being thinkers, being able to digest information, to communicate it really clearly using a variety of methods. And then on top of that, they're balancing this quite heavy CAS um, commitments as well. And if you talk to the students at our school, like I know Esther, she has a real passion for skiing and has actually missed chunks of school to, to do her ski training and teaching. But that's the whole point about being these balanced individuals. And then they go to university where the academic side might step up a bit, but they've got those skills that makes them these balanced people, but also real people. They have personalities, they have interests, and they can communicate that. And I think that's what makes our IB learners really shine when they when they go on to education in the future. I have to completely agree because, for example, while whilst I was still in high school, I was uh, competing in academic rowing. And there are some skills that you just cannot get from school. Like, for example, how to dig deep, how to dig deeper always, uh, maybe in, when times get tough, how to stick out, stick through, and what is teamwork as a whole, because like academic rowing, you have to be synchronized and you, you have to really understand the other person. You just can't go on your own. And this has contributed to my teamwork as such. And I believe that doing stuff outside of school is really important also to like create your profile and the... Uh, well, become a better person in a, with a broader range of uh, experience this, that you've uh, had. And maybe this, this is also with uh, one of the questions that I have. How would you say students could uh, more effectively communicate their interest and in what it has taught them? So they don't just say, oh, I've been a skier. How would they need to articulate themselves maybe a little bit better? How to like say what they have learned from it or 
what to do from that, not to just give the dry facts. Yeah, this was uh, these were my grades. Yes, I was a skier, but like how to maybe. So during the interviews. Yeah. 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 So I think we make it quite easy because we get for each student, say, 20 pages of, you know, recommendation letters, motivation letters, and we actually look through it. So we come to the interview prepared and we know exactly what we want to know about. So tell, I'm a rower too, by the way. Tell me about your academic rowing experience and you tell us. And then we ask follow-up questions. So tell us about what you learned about it in terms of teamwork, etc. So we tease it out. But it's, of course, one of the things we are assessing is the ability to reflect on yourself and your skills and your place in the world. And so the more prepared you are for that, it sounds like this is something that aligns the better you perform during the interview. And maybe uh, a question regarding IB. Have you, in the interview process, have seen how, for example, the IB students differ from other types of education, for example, the normal one that we have in uh, Latvia? So I don't know what the normal one is because there's such diversity even within Latvia. We get, we get many applications from regional schools and, of course, the gymnasiums, but also from any other school and then IB and then abroad. So I don't know what is a normal school anymore. <laughs> but um, where I see IB graduate students really standing out is their ability to, to express themselves and to think about their role in society. Mm -hmm. So when they talk about economics, for instance, which is something we ask students to do for obvious reason, reasons, right, and business, uh, they are able to, to sort of see the connections. And that is something we really appreciate. Uh, they also do well on the case studies. I don't know if you do case study practice, yeah, they do. but they are not, don't seem to be those students who see it for the first time, mm -hmm. which we take into consideration, but that also makes it a different kind of conversation. Could you add upon that? Case study? <laughs> You've done you it? Yeah. Right sitting here. Uh, we do a bunch of case studies. We focus a lot on applying, well, we have the learning, and we focus a lot on applying it to the real world and what is actually happening. So in economics, we had to do um, like three big case studies that we actually submitted to the IB. And so I think that's where also that experience comes from, like he was saying before about his uh, fellow uh, course. So what was your favorite case study? Um, I did one about um, a Canadian tax on beverages. And um, that one was super interesting because it wasn't just like the direct implications of that but there was so much that it affected and there was so much that I got to learn and it, I don't know it was really crazy to see and it opened my eyes to more of what the field is. <laughs>
there's a whole room full of students sitting exams, but throughout the two years, they're assessed through doing presentations, through doing group tasks. Um, as I said, the sixth group in the IB diploma is the arts, where students are encouraged to take an arts subject, which uh, they have to collaborate with. The CAS as well, you have to do what's called a CAS project, which is where you essentially create your own initiative of some in some way that you are interested in and you collaborate with other students you are the driving force behind it it gives them these opportunities to do things like that that they wouldn't normally do just through learning english through learning math so i think the ib program is really good in that way and could you for example point out some of these uh, projects that students have done what was your over, project? yeah what was your project um we were looking at um we went to the primary school and we sort of led this workshop activity. It was like a day long thing with uh, primary students about being global citizens and environmental sustainability and looking forward because, you know, this is their world and they need to learn that from the very beginning. And um, so it was an amazing experience interacting with these children. And we had to adapt so much because we sort of assumed that they knew very little about it. And we came and we asked them some like preliminary questions and they were all over the place. You know, they were really excited to share all their learning, everything they'd done at school. And so we had to uh, adapt a lot and we ended up taking some very interesting uh, like perspectives. And I think it was a learning experience for both us, like the group that uh, did the cast project and also the that we worked with. Yeah, I remember also in the 11th grade, me and my classmate made this sort of a project and it was... I remember uh, during like the independence whole time, independence theme, so during November, and that project also taught me a lot. We were, firstly, we went to like uh, Riga Brethren Cemetery where we cleaned it up and afterwards went to the museum, but the whole like uh, organizing it and that taught really a lot about how important contacts are because for example, we tried to reach a certain uh, grocery store chain, but they didn't respond. So in the last week we had to find somewhere where to get the food for the people. So. I think these kinds of projects where you have to work together, uh, they're very important for like actual practical learnings. Yeah. You make mistakes. Yeah. It's yeah. really important to make mistakes and be like, that didn't work. Okay, how can I won't we? I be doing that Yeah, again. <laughs> and, and learning from it and all of those skills that they develop, which are completely done outside of the classroom, just make them these kind of well-rounded students that hopefully are ready to face things in the future. It gives them that bit of life experience. And I think it is like, the fact about the big i think plus about projects is that you have to work with other people mm -hmm. and i think that is like the most important thing especially in in ssc rig like almost in all of the courses we have some kind of uh work where we have to work together with people and i really enjoy like seeing the different perspectives of uh other students and how they approach the problem i remember in the the 11th grade uh me and uh one friend from my school we participated in a hackathon and we didn't have a team, we, did, we were just two, and we got, I think, four other people for the project, all from various different backgrounds. Uh, we had a guy who was uh, an SSC Riga student, we had a geologist who was uh, uh, already way past, like, uh, university times. We had uh, a gentleman from Turkey, so all of these different perspectives you have to learn to listen to other people as well as take their perspective into mind because I think if we learn to listen, see the other perspectives, the solutions will be a lot more well-rounded and you won't try to speak your truth and only stick to that. But if you can listen to other people, accept their truth, it will lead to all around a better result. So I think these team projects are very important yeah. for learnings and uh, for future development. Yes. Oh. Good segment. <laughs> <laughs>
because it's a huge transition, uh, both like culturally and just being a lot more responsible just for myself. Um, but I really hope to keep it going. But I'd also like to know, like, what was it like for you? Yeah, for me, I remember, I think it is in all universities that like the first semester you have to dig really deep. It's like you just have to grasp onto the bars and stay there because, uh, I don't know, it was like this great filter. You just see which people stick through and which don't. Like uh, I had to make a lot of sacrifices during uh, the first semester, for example. Beforehand, I thought, oh, I won't lose. Like I will still keep on uh, doing sports. I will still stay, stay in the gym. But then these priorities changed like, and like I just had to stick through it. Like uh, I know in our school uh, for this year in particular, it was uh, like four courses at the same time and all of them were quite different. And uh, but I still I believe that it is a, a great practice, especially the fact that, for example, and this is like going in <laughs> into the detail, but like the first payment that you have to make is like in late autumn so it you don't have this for example you don't have to pay at the start and it is like and you just stay out of spite because oh i already paid i'll just stay but you have this time to acc acclimatize and like if you don't like it you can go away and i think that is very important because both for the pu uh, pupils themselves and both for the university why would you want to stay why would you want students to stay that aren't really enjoying the subjects that they are being taught and uh yeah, I think it was a very good approach, but after the first semester, and I think this is like a good message to all of like the 12th grade students, like almost all of my friends that I've spoken to, and it doesn't like uh, depend on the, the university that you'll go, go to. The first semester will be hard, but you just have to stay tough, stick through it, and uh, it will afterwards it will be a lot more Okay. It's interesting you say that because I've heard for students who've done the IB diploma that their first semester of university feels easy in comparison to what they've just gone through. So I don't know. Let's wait and see. <laughs> okay. You'll have to report back to us. <laughs> well, maybe it was for me, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I sort of went to, through the same thing when I started IB. It was like I I hadn't expected it to be so much work, and I at first I did drop some of my extracurriculars, but I slowly started to learn again how to manage my time and I started adding them back and so I'm a little worried but I think I can handle it. No but it also it is like I think you're, a big part of it is the change in the environment that you're in so okay you have to just slowly settle in it cannot be that fast and it is only natural that this is this whole environment the new people new everything you've already grown accustomed to for example I studied six years in one school and then now it is something entirely new new teachers new staff new new everything new culture also that you uh have to get used to so um i think it is just natural that maybe it's a bit hard at the start but did you get to attend the parties though because that's the yeah. that's the benchmark <laughs> yeah. did you get okay. to attend the parties i, I got, got to attend the parties yeah yeah <laughs> i was gonna say i remember my first year just being a lot of fun <laughs> no it was well, like uh it is a a mix of everything like all of the parties have been great uh big shout out to eventcom who have uh done all of this and uh but i think that is like the biggest thing is community mm. i was because... gonna say not just parties but just getting groups together to cook yeah. together things like that are some of my best memories yeah almost yeah. blowing up the kitchen in my halls of residence at university because <laughs> <laughs> it was an accident but like those memories will stay with me forever they are very important and i think especially for for example joining in some kind of an organization or committee it is also very beneficial as you get to know for example the students that are there from previous year they can give you some valuable insights from uh, a plethora of courses like yeah this one for example okay the sec latter part of the october will be a lot harder so they can just communicate with you a lot better and it will th make the settling in process a lot easier. So as you are gearing up for university, what is going through your mind? Like may maybe there are some <laughs> tips I can give to you or clear some things up. Uh, any expectations or are you nervous? <laughs> I'm very nervous. I mean, it's a huge change for me, especially since I'm going to Abu Dhabi and it, it's a huge like cultural shift too. And I mean, I know you stayed here to study, but you know, from, from your experiences with other students who did come here and are studying basically abroad, 
Um, I think it has a lot to do with the, the school as a whole because we're in our roots, we're very uh, international. For example, a lot of my best friends from uh, my course are Estonians. So, and like one thing I could uh, tell to you is that you, like in the first semester, you kind of feel out uh, different groups of people and then you stick to the ones that uh, adhere to your standards or your culture, uh, like your values and just stick with them because uh, those are the people that you will go through the whole school. And uh, I think you just have to find your own people and that will be a lot easier and uh, more fun. But yeah, like there aren't many like, uh, like tips that I could give to you because there is not one right answer how to approach university. For everybody, it's different. Like I know people that are still like uh, very heavy on the studies. I know some people that are more social. They have some... Uh, uh, exams not passed like everybody approaches this, their studies differently and uh, it is university after all like it is not high school where everybody's looking at your fingers oh you didn't do this oh you didn't do that all of it is your choice as they say <laughs> university well it is not really pushed up onto you it is just your decision so you can approach it how you want it I know some people that are uh, just like oh I won't write this exam this year I will write it next year simply because they want it. So you just find what works for you and you stick to that. For me, uh, I've found that uh, never, never, ever uh, fail an exam. The re-exams will uh, <laughs> make it harder upon you. But uh, yeah, just find what works best for you. And there is no one right recipe for studies. And if I can add to that, this yeah. is actually something I research. Integration, especially for uh, students in higher education, it's not the formula. It's important to learn the formula, it's very important. <laughs> but it's not the formulas you will remember, but the people, the experience, blowing up the kitchen, <laughs> the friends who, you know, will be there at your next graduation or wedding or funeral or yeah. something like that, not to be gloomy. So I think it's about finding your people mm -hmm. also that will help you make you feel like you belong to that community. One tip I was given was have one good recipe that you can knock up at any time that would be like something that's quite a, a social thing like fajitas or something and people will want to come as you've got, you've got that one good recipe you can just like do it anytime that kind of saved me a lot <laughs> are there any for, more tips about integration as such or was that it you find your people and be active be active uh, in communities in in in, in committees, uh, working groups, whatever you choose to do and pursue your passion, I think. Don't forget who you are. So like skiing, if that's your thing, find a mountain, yeah? Find your mountain. Don't give up yourself, even though it's a new environment. I think it's important. And if you need, don't be shy to uh, use the, the help you need, whether that's someone in the administration or faculty or psychological help. That is something that, for instance, we provide to all the students international. I'm jumping straight to academic advising after this, for instance, for us, all the students get a specific faculty member they have to meet four times a year in order to get them settled. So use all the available help you can get and then decide. And have fun, have fun. Mm. Have fun. That's very important, that's very <laughs> important. As we say in SEC Riga, study hard, party hard. I know some years ago it was study hard, party harder, but uh, we've changed it to study hard, party hard. So it's equal, equal parts, equal parts of both. And I think on that note, closing statement, key takeaways and final thoughts. So out of this whole experience, what will stay in your mind about, for example, transitioning from high school to university? Definitely the forging connections thing. I think that's, it's not the first thing my mind went to when I was thinking about it. So I'm glad to have that insight. For you? I think it's for students, particularly who've done the IB diploma, just to recognize their achievements. It's a really hard two years. And I think because they are surrounded by people also doing it, they don't realize how miraculous their achievements are. And just to recognize that and just realize that will prepare them well for the future.
And also, I think, like, play at your strengths, for example, which is uh, the communication part and understanding who you are as a person. I think that was the thing that really uh, resonated with me about how it is very important to stay yourself, to be able to communicate the teamwork also. That was, yeah, that was for me. <laughs> and out to you, Kata. Look beyond the immediate, so look beyond the immediate environment, look for case studies or learning experiences to make connections in other parts of the world. Keep, keep finding new things about society and, and try to contribute to those. I think it's something that I really appreciated. I learned about the IB system as well. And thanks for having me here today. What about you? For me? Final what thought. did you learn? Final thought. Regarding IB, uh, it was mostly uh, something that I knew but didn't know why. For example, why they're such good uh, report writers, why the communication with them is so easy, uh, things like that. So it is a little bit more cleared things up for me and uh, about IB as a whole, about how good it is for universities and this uh, global thinking that it encourages in their students. And I think that is one of the most important things in this ever globalizing world <laughs> that we live in. So. I think on that note, thank you all very, thank I you for express my gratitude to, to you for coming. This was a very interesting episode. And uh, dear listeners, we will meet you on the next one. Thank you for listening to this one. Share, like, and thank you. Meet you on the next one.